Hey, good morning. It's Friday, September 24th. Again, thank you for being here this morning. As we work through Psalm 34, our thoughts today about how David begins to instruct us in the way of righteousness, in the way of goodness. If you recall, we've been working through Psalm 34, and we need the historical context to really understand what's happening. Because David begins, Psalm 34 flows out of David's foolishness, of him not fearing God, fearing people, and trusting himself. And as we saw, he got himself in just an unbelievable mess. One that looked like there was no way out, but God came and rescued him. And this is the beginning of David's rule as king, where he breaks free from Saul and he begins his seven year journey till he finally wins the kingdom and unites it in Jerusalem. But Psalm 34 is the beginning of that journey. And as we said, it starts in the most unlikely way with David running in fear and not trusting God. So Psalm 34 then is about David's response to that. He sees his fear and he sees he responded in fear in lack of trust. So how does he respond? He responds with this glorious poem. It's an acrostic poem. That means every verse begins with the successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. There's structure here. So David begins with praise for God just rescuing him from his mess. And then he gives testimony to the, of God's goodness. Then he invites us to trust God, to walk in the fear of God instead of the fear of man or trusting ourselves. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And now he finishes with two sections. He doesn't, he doesn't stay in his mess. <clears throat> He's not in the middle of some uh, deep pity party. He's not oblivious to, to all of that because after he encourages us to taste and see that the Lord is good, then he breaks into two sections of instruction. The first section is an instruction to the righteousness and the way of righteous, and the second is telling us about how God works in this world. So in verses 11 through 14, we read this. This is an instruction. Notice, come sons, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of Yahweh, as opposed to what? As the fear of Saul, the fear of man. <clears throat> the problems that come from trusting in myself. I will teach you the fear of Yahweh. Who is the, who is the man that delights in life? Who loves many days, good days? Who wants to see good? Amen, we all do, right? Therefore, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good, and seek peace and pursue it. See, this is, resonates with so many of the Proverbs that Solomon will write later on, with other Psalms that God has for us. The way of the righteous is to turn away from trusting man, turn away from the fear of man, which David showed, and instead, trust and fear Yahweh. As he did in front of Goliath, he didn't worry about Goliath. He just knew he had to honor God. And God took care of Goliath for David as he slung the stone at him. Well, he's saying here, come and I will teach you. And how do I do that? If, if you want to enjoy life, do the good things of life, you see, he's reaching out to what we want. If you want that, keep your tongue from evil. Don't speak ill of God. Don't, don't give all these other alternative plans when God has given us away. Keep your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good and seek peace. This path, these words are so meaningful for us today. So Peter picks, up, 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 picks them up in his chapter three of his first epistle and quotes this portion of Psalm 34 about how to live good lives among the pagans so that if you live this way, they will come to you and they'll want an answer for why you are able to live this way in a wicked world. These verses, 11 through 14, 
tell us about the goodness of God and what it means to fear God. Let's keep, let's keep the flow of the song. What is David doing in particular here? He's helping us get a grasp of how we can deal when we mess up. Because David messed up, God rescued him, he gives praise to God, he gives testimony about the rescue, he invites, come taste and see the goodness of God, but he doesn't stop there. Then he begins to instruct us in 11 through 14 in the way of the righteous. Turn from evil, turn from deceit, turn from things that don't center your trust on God. Don't look for trust in human stuff to make you right or to give you peace. Honoring, fearing God is where that is. And so that's the invitation for all of us. And Peter even recorded it almost word for word in his epistle. So now we're getting a fuller picture. And then he's going to end the psalm with instructions about how Yahweh works, how God works, your covenant friend works. So 30, Psalm 34 is becoming a cohesive whole to us, a beautiful picture of a response when God takes care of us when we're stupid. And that's such a blessing. Again, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for so many of your uh, encouragements about you know, my mother-in-law being called home to be with God. And I'm just rejoicing in that this day and God's faithfulness to her and the great legacy that she's left and how blessed I am to be part of that. And thankful for Ruth and for my kids and for just so much about God's goodness. Again, please, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Turn on post notifications. The videos will come right to you. Check us out, Everyday Talk 24.com. Everyday Talk 247.com makes that mistake every morning, seems like. And just check us out there. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again for being here so much. And again, Lord willing, we'll talk to you tonight about the way of Yahweh as we end the Psalm 34. Have a great day. Again, thanks so much for being here. Bye bye.